All right, this is our second video for the second exercise, which is taking an inspiration image. This is some fan art of a Marvel character called the Juggernaut. And we are going to try to make our own shape interpretation of it. This is where I am so far. Now, this all is predicated on an illustration concept called basic shapes. That no matter how complex, here I have the image open in preview. I'm going to copy it, select it all and copy it. And this is all kind of extra just to show you. No matter how complex a two-dimensional image is, it can be a photograph of rose bushes. It can be um, a city skyline. It can be a chain link fence, right? No matter how complex a two-dimensional shape is, it is made up of smaller, simpler shapes. And we call those shapes simple shapes in illustration. Whenever you buy a how to draw book, for instance, hmm, why is this not letting me do anything? Oh, that's why. Whenever you buy a how to draw book, like a how to draw cats book, it will show you how to draw cats by first drawing ovals and triangles and rectangles, and then how you can turn that into a cat. So if you're unfamiliar with this concept, I'm just going to demonstrate it really quickly by copying this image. And this might help you too if you're having trouble translating your image into shapes. And just pasting it on. And then I'm going to take its opacity down to about 50%. This is like putting tracing paper over the top. Lock it. These are all principles we're going to practice more in our exercise. Then I put a new blank layer on top of it. I'm just going to use my brush. And I'm going to use just a really basic brush that's pressure sensitive. at a high opacity and not so large because <laughs> this is not a high, high resolution image. And if I wanted to draw this image for myself, I would not start by drawing the details of the eye. Right? That would be a mistake. Instead, if I were to draw this for myself, I would start with the really big shapes. So I have a big oval there. I have what's called a wedge shape here, which is like a triangle with its head cut off. I have a rectangle here, an oval here. The head is half of an oval, right? And it's cut off. So it's basically a circle. And then I might put guidelines on it to show where the eyes actually go. And the eyes themselves are just, can be simplified as triangles. And the mouth is an oval. And there's a big wedge here. So I'm going for the biggest shapes first, even though they overlap each other. And then this huge circle for that thigh and this huge oval for that other thigh and over and over again, just like in a how to draw book. And then the foot can be broken into a wedge shape and a triangle. And then this is just definitely a wedge. And then this fist, you have a triangle here, and then a square. Oval on top. So those are the basic shapes of this juggernaut. And then I just missed this big circle here, which shows the forearm coming forward. And already, just through those really simple shapes, and these are the basic shapes. I'll do them in a different color. They are square, rectangle, circle, oval or ellipse, triangle, and then the one specialized one is the wedge, which is a triangle with its head cut off. But if you needed to, you can make it out of three triangles. Right. And if you layer those six shapes on top of each other, you can make any two-dimensional image you want, right? And then, of course, if you divide those shapes with these kind of guidelines, like to find where his chest is or where his waist is, and this is how character designers work, it's how prop designers work, it's how creature designers work, it's how vehicle designers work, um, you can bring that up and make it into anything. 
just to show you. This is often how people learn to draw, especially if they're interested in illustration. So I'll fill this layer with white and just show you the character I drew all the time as a kid, Garfield, clearly just made of basic shapes, right? Circles, divided, big oval, little oval, little circles, big circles, half ovals, lots of ovals because he's an organic character, right? And then as he's aged, Jim Davis, his creator, has kind of made his head a little bit more wedge-shaped than oval. And then you just put in little details to kind of finish it up. Now, the beauty of basic shapes is it helps you be consistent. So it's not just copying one image once. It helps you make that character in different angles. So if Garfield's looking up, I use those same shapes, right? But just in a slightly different orientation. And then I can even play with some of them, like he has his mouth open and his eyes wide. And now he's very happy because the lasagna is falling into his mouth, whatever it might be, right? And then he has whiskers, which I've never quite understood, but I've come to appreciate them. As a kid, I would usually just leave them up. All right. So basic shapes become our understanding of things. And it's just as true of Garfield as it is of a lamp. So mechanical world is made of wedges and ovals and rectangles, and circles, and squares, and triangles, and ovals. And based on the perspective you want to see it, you'll have to use those ovals to kind of tilt and show the things in space. Right. So this is very much related to our shape exercise, exercise two. Because you don't draw a lamp that's really, really fancy by starting with details. So if I'm doing like a Louis the, the 15th Rococo lamp, and I have the shade and the shade is flared out and has these curved mansart panels. I could draw all the detail first, and then it has lace around the edge, and then the, the base is rounded, and then it curves in, and then there's like lion claw feet. And I can draw all this detail, and it can work well for one drawing, but if I want to reproduce that lamp and draw it again, or have it as a design for a lamp, it's just going to be all wonky and crazy. So what I have to do is then simplify its shapes, you know, to something more like this, that then I can add decoration to. So I would split up the panels now within the basic shapes and then add the scallops and then add the lacy fringe within each panel and then separate this base into the different feet with their own basic shapes that would work in foreshortening. And so the basic rule of illustration and of building things in two dimensions is you go from the most basic shapes, simple shapes, to more specific and detailed. So you always start with the big simple shapes first. So with that in mind, whether it's a lamp, whether it's a character, whether it's the juggernaut or copying a rose bush, we want to put down the big basic shapes first. The problem is, as soon as we start covering them up, we don't see the original anymore. It's not quite like it is with the tracing paper. So how can we make it more like the tracing paper? So once you've covered up some big things, I'll go ahead and cover up a little bit more, like this big thigh. Again, using Command-T. 
cutting out these big pieces of of colored paper, angling them sometimes, right-clicking inside them and distorting or warping to customize the shape even more. And then, of course, you can drag certain shapes under other shapes. Right. And that gets us close, but it's covering up a lot of detail. So what I'm going to do now is go to my first layer. I'm just uh, clicking on the eyeball so you can see it clearly. And I'm going to make that white layer that we created, which was a buffer, or the background color layer. Mine just happens to be white. I'm going to make it 100% then I'm seeing exactly, all at 100% normal mode, what shapes I have. And then I'm going to take my background and I'm going to duplicate it, Command J. Then I'm going to move that on top of everything. And just like tracing paper, I'm going to move that down to only about 20% in opacity. So I see a little ghost of it. Then I'm going to hit the lock button. So that that layer is locked, which means that when I'm using the move tool and I have auto select checked as the first option in the tool options for the move tool, I can click on any of these shapes and it will automatically select the, the vector layer that made those shapes. Even though there is this layer on top of everything, because it's locked, it won't select that layer. If that top layer isn't locked, it will select it every time, no matter where I click. Right? So make sure that, that it's locked. And that shows you what kind of shapes you still need. So now, when I keep building up shapes, now I'm going to try some rectangles, because I've only done ellipses so far. And I command T transform them, and then I can skew or distort them. Distort's great if you just want to put the, the corners wherever you want to put the corners. So it's great for wedge shapes. It's great for, um, for having things overlap, right? So I can combine that shape with an ellipse. Just a very shallow ellipse here and tilt it to get the bracelet on that side. And I'm not trying to make it absolutely perfect. I'm just trying to, to match the overall composition of this. And then this square hand, you know, it's just a lot of repetition of these skills we're learning. So how do I pick that color? Well, what I can do is go to my background layer, unlock it, put it up to 100%, and steal the color from it, like we've been doing then take it down to 20%, but that's a pain. So the much easier way, lock that again, is to simply turn that layer off and then turn off your background layer, right? You don't always need your background layer on. And that way you can still steal colors that you need while being informed by the lock layer on top that will show you what the shape should be. And then if I use distort, I can put the corners of this rectangular shape anywhere I want. Now, what if you want a triangle shape? That is possible within the vector shapes in Photoshop, but it's not too intuitive, right? Also, I just made that kind of wedge shape. If I hit Command J, it will give me a duplicate of that shape. And I can make my thumb out of that. Remember, I'm going for basic first. And I could use a rounded ellipse tool or a rounded rectangle tool. But that's just really finishing details. And all I have to do to see my, my layers and how they're working is turn off that top layer. Okay, now I'm going to make the red circle, and I can also steal the color from other shapes I've already made, right? Especially if I'm limiting it to only web colors. They're going to be pretty standard. 